load of batteries. And I mean, you know, you hook six of those during the course of the night, and they can <laughs> can knock the tar out of you. So the whole the whole principle of it is, is you get like an eight or a ten foot. This thing's a mess. That's you need these. See those little wrap things? That's what you need to wrap them on. I'm going to do that actually after this. Anyway, so the, the whole principle is an eight or ten foot dropper loop rig. What I do, the reason I do it is because you got at least two foot of squid eggs over there. You know, they're laying on the bottom. You got spawned out squid. You got all this crap. Bat rays are just jetting right along that, scooping all that up. So if you got just like a regular halibut dropper loop rig or whatever, it's just laying right there, and nine times out of ten, that's going to pick it up. Now this doesn't prevent every bat ray from picking it up, but it gives you a better opportunity to stay the hell away from where they're typically at. Um, so that's you know that's why I like to use that. Um, that's eight foot long. I use eight or ten foot in Catalina. With live squid. Yes. And um, the other thing is, um, this is going to sound kind of funny. <clears throat> I always tell people to think like a white sea bass. When you're going over there and you're looking at different things, look at the kelp, look at the structure, look at the off-color water, and just think, okay, where would I be if I want to sabotage a bait? The sea bass are stealth. I mean, they sit up in a spot, and the bait never, or the fish, they eat mackerel a lot too, they never knew it hit them. You know, look at the look at the kelp. Sometimes you see like a you know little thing like this, and they'll be sitting in here, or you'll see like the dark water and then the the milky stuff. You know, they're probably sitting right on this edge. You know, right there. Or you'll see where a hard bottom meets sand. It, you know, those kind of things. Um, great sabotage points for the sea bass. Um, always have lines in the water 24/7. Um, I'm the crazy guy that stays up all night. I've gotten so many bites in the middle of the night. It's not even funny. And all the other guys are drunk off their minds, and I, I let, that's actually probably just as important to me as catching the sea bass is waking them up in their drunken coma. Anyway, here's here's one of mine. It's actually yeah, it's about eight foot. How long before the hook? Uh, how many? About three feet. Yeah, see, it's like from right here. That's about that's about seven seven feet there, and then yeah, about seven feet. Yeah. And this is a little short. I mean, I like to go longer, but um, you put a you torpedo know, on the bottom, or what? Yeah, torpedo on the bottom, and then you just crank it to where you know you feel it on the bottom, and you and that's it. And it'll just stick it in the rod hole and let it bounce up and down. But yeah, have the lines in the water 24/7 because uh, you know they're gonna swim through. Like two we, two and a half weeks ago when I was there, they swam under the boat so many times. I just I got them to stop one time, but I couldn't couldn't get them to go. Really frustrating, but that's why I see that. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always happen all the time. Um, what else did I? Do? Oh yeah, boat etiquette. That's another thing. Well, actually, let let me go back to this other thing first. Um, one of the things that we love to do when we're into a wide open bite, a boat comes up to us. We'll put our real uh, rod tips in the water and we'll put it in a free spool because you definitely don't want those yahoos because they're all you know looking at you with goggles or if they see sun drop on the boat they're like oh okay these guys know what's going on so what we do is we just put it in free spool and stick the rod tips in there because they can't see what's going on so then we're just like normal guys fishing you know and it's cool because nine times out of ten they're just going to pass you by it's like, okay cool it's on <laughs> back to business you know so it's pretty cool i know that trick yeah <laughs> but but boat etiquette is uh is very important just kind of respect your others out there, you know, um, that one spot that I was telling you about earlier, it's called the Nook. Other people call it Whale Rock and Catalina, um, but the old boat captains call it the Nook. So we were sitting there, and uh, one of the sport boat guys that I won't say, he came right up on us, and we were pretty mad. You know, it's one thing, like if they do it to us, it's okay, but if we do it to them, they get really pissed, you know. So, but that's one of the things I do. I stay away from people. I mean, no matter if the bite's wide open or not, get your own fish, you know, get your own. And if they're nice enough, like I am, if I see you and we're into a bite and we're almost done, I'll call you over. I don't care who you are. I'll say, hey, come on over. That's how I am. Because, you know, it's, it's cool to be like that. I mean, in my opinion. Okay. This is my rig. I use, uh, this is like my, one of my, besides the dropper loop thing, my nighttime slayer rig. Um, gotta watch this here. This is my trick. Right? Yeah. I just, the longer you leave it on, the longer the charge will be on. So I leave it in there for a while. Um, same thing with the, with the Taddy. This is a killer jig as well, actually. This one, 
Last year I caught a lot of my sea bass on this one. Same thing. I just hold the light like this and let it charge up. It just gives it a little more iridescent kind of deal in the water. How long it runs? What's that? I'm going to tell you how long that thing will run. Yes, tell me. Okay, if it's just hanging in your garage, you turn the lights on, whatever, it'll be glowing for hours. But once you put it in water and it gets down in the, in the low temperatures or so, it's only going to last about 30 to 40 minutes in cold okay. water. Okay. Gotcha. So, if it's been soaking for more than 30 minutes, bring it back up, charge it again. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Okay. Because, like I said, but these things when in our in our sh in our uh, warehouse, you could see the glow section at night because it's kind of really eerie. The whole thing, every time it glows, <laughs> but it will glow for hours. And in this, and this, I like I like this TLC because it seems to be when you put it in the rod holder, it seems to be more lively. You know, makes the squid dance seem more natural. And I like the single hook. I don't like the treble hooks as much, just because, you know, sea bass have the violent head shakes, and sometimes they, they can throw those pretty easy. This one seems to bury itself pretty good. I mean, you have your rod and gear, and it's it's pretty buried, and it ain't come. I mean, I, I've never had this come out yet. I'm sure it'll happen next trip, and I curse myself. But, um, this is the other thing I do. I fish, uh, I fish, I'm sure you guys read about it a million times now in Western Outdoor News. That's another pretty good publication for info, but it's usually a few days late, of course. Um, I fish the kelp cutter rig. That's the only one I fish. Um, I got 65 pound Spectra. Then I got 50 pound uh, Isoline Triple X is what I use. White sea bass are not line shy. Anybody that tells you different, they're lying. Uh, I've, I only fish them 50 pound. That's it. Sometimes I'll go 60 even. Like at night I'll fish them 60. Same thing. Just like Al, but they don't care. They're stupid. Yellowtails, that's different. <laughs> Yellowtails different. They can, they can be kind of sketchy. Um, anyway, the other thing about the kelp cutter rig is like last year, I saved probably a dozen fish that got into kelp, got into anchors. You just got to watch it when it wraps around your anchor line. Um, now I usually pull really hard, which is amazing that I've actually gotten them into the anchor line, but I pull really hard and they're supposed to have really soft mouths and I've seen that, but I've never had a hook pull out even though I pull like really hard. So I've been really lucky like that. Um, also, um, file a multi-day. I don't. I think I brought that along. Like if you go out on an overnight trip, file a multi-day trip. That way, in case you do get into a bite, um, basically if you leave uh, day one before noon, you can catch your limit before 12 o'clock. Your next limit starts after 12, and you don't have to return back to port till 12 the next day. So you can keep two days worth of limits. So make sure you file that because it's beneficial to you if you go over there and you got to, especially now, you know, that it's going to be switching over to one here in a few weeks, um, you know, because that's a lot of fuel, it's money, and it's a lot of time and effort. So anyway, oh, one more thing. Uh, keep an eye out on the six packs when you're out there too. It might help you out too, um, and it'll help your friends. You know, if you come back and you say, hey, man, the dreamer cruised by me like about 11 o'clock and he kind of tucked into the little harbor or whatever, and then you read later on, you know, some publication, he got a bite. Might help out your friends. It's not going to help you out, you know, but it'll help your friends out. So, you know, I'll, I'll take that info sometimes, and I'll tell my friends, you yeah, know, well, I saw, you know, the Westerly was going here, or, you know, the Dreamer's the guy you want to pay attention to. Options is a good boat. Marty O's is a good boat. Um, those guys really know what they're doing. So, options. Yeah, you, I've noticed that you lose a real long rod. Oh, thank you. Why is that? What a retard. Thank you. You saved my life. Yes, for the violent head shakes. Thank right. you. Yeah, pulling that, would you? On the rod tip. Hmm. Yeah, sea bass will just like bounce it. Head shake. Oh. Yeah, there you go. You want something that's good. It's one of the most important things, actually. Mm. I slept two hours, so you have to cut me some slack. Um, yeah, sea bass really have the violent head shakes, so you definitely want to have like a soft rod. Um, if you don't, what's going to happen is, is they're just going to, it's just going to bounce the hook out of their mouths. And the, and the one negative to this is there's, there's no stretch in, in this. So you're, you're losing a little bit there, but the rod will absorb most of it, so you'll be okay. I mean, I've, I really time tested it the last few years, and it's really worked. It's been golden. I just love fishing with this now. I love the sound that <laughs> going through your guides and that sound. It just gets your heart pumping, man. I love it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, that's about it. Uh, what leader connection do you use? 
I just I use the 65 pound Spectra. I use the uh, whatever the wax stuff, um, and then I use a uh, 50 pound. Uh, oh, it's like a double San Diego or double blood knot, whatever you want to call. It. Yeah, that's how that's how I've always done it. So never come undone yet. So I've been lucky. So I reverse all breaks. <laughs> yeah. Easy the time. Seven eight oh eight. Hmm? Oh, this is actually from my company that I started my own. Oh, I was going to say that actually. Yeah, this I was going to mention that this reel is actually the best reel out on the planet, in my opinion. It's uh, yeah, this particular one. The other ones, no. <laughs> but this one, yes. Um, they just came out with this last February. I researched reels for six months. I mean, look, tested them, looked at them. Really wanted to see the nuts and bolts. This has 22 to 24 pounds of drag pressure, which is not heard of on a low-profile bait casting reel. Just, it's not there. Look at every reel; it doesn't exist. This one does, and I've tested it. 30, 40 pound sea bass, no problem. I haven't hooked a yellow. I will this year. <laughs> I just got it last year. Um, I'm going to buy another one. I just love it to death, and it's got a clicker. It's called a Toro Revo winch. It's a 4.6 to one, made for saltwater. Now they make other Toro Revos, but it's not the same thing. It's this one is just beautiful. Oh my God, I love it. We can order that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They can order it here, so and they'll probably give you a better deal than you can find anywhere else too. With the Revo winch, is that what you said? Yeah, Toro. Yeah, Abu Garcia Revo Toro winch, and it's a 4.6 to one. That's the gear ratio you want. Nice and slow, nice and low. Can you compare that to the Corrado? Oh, this. Yeah, to me. Right, but doesn't the inshore have a 20 pound? Uh, yes. 20 pound yes. same thing? Because yes. I pitched the real. Yes. The uh, inshore is, is nice too. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How much did you pay? This I got on eBay, I think I got it for like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, the Spectre is it's really good. I saved a lot of fish last year on it. So one thing you gotta watch though, if you do get them on the anchor, man, you can lose your fingers real easy. That fish pulls one time, and you're trying to get you know trying to get that line out or you know doing this kind of thing. Anyway, thank you. All right.